During this period, we had experienced the worst economic decline in U.S. history, where we lost 3.3 million businesses over two months, from February until April 2020. Those operating under the greatest threat were minority-owned businesses, and in particular, African-American-owned businesses who experienced a 41% drop in businesses lost. By May, the economy uh, continued to decline with as much as a 15% drop. But by September, these closures and economic losses have resulted in more than 800,000 women leaving the workforce in that month alone. So the businesses who are part of this report represent both established operations who survived the initial impact of COVID-19 and those new startups launched by the same women who were forced out of the workforce only months prior. Our methodology uh, for this research utilizes a qualitative and quantitative survey design with the goal of collecting approximately 1,000 responses nationwide. 90% of them identified as Black or African American women, and this group represents the largest segment of entrepreneurial growth, reflecting a 179% increase in new businesses over the past decade from 2002 to 2012, compared to growth for all women-owned businesses at 52% and businesses overall at 20%. Part of our next deliverable is to produce two talking papers around these subjects that, that can be used as instruments to start additional conversations moving forward. So one of these topics is leadership and resilience. You know, what does that look like through the lens of a multicultural woman business owner who is still operating in the third cycle of COVID-19 and who has no intention of closing, who is determined to make sure that she remains operational and that she is offering that service to the community? The other factor was risk mitigation education. We realized that there was a strong trend towards misinformation and miscommunication. Um, we have a very strong case here for what kinds of challenges and barriers these women experienced and were subjected to during COVID-19. So being a stronger advocate through partnerships, creating better alliances, or even communicating out better information is something that we can certainly uh, look into and explore further. The technology readiness piece, we saw during COVID-19 that even a lot of tech companies were experiencing a tremendous amount of growth, but recognized that even they could do better in terms of serving entrepreneurs. What would partnerships with tech companies look like to provide services or create these niche programs and education opportunities to make sure multicultural women business owners are more comfortable with using technology for their businesses and to serve their businesses well? concept of uh, building embedded business ecosystems that were able to deploy early. But now there's an opportunity for improved at the ground level communication and at the ground level processes that need to be in place so that um, any businesswoman who is being impacted can just call a number and get immediate custom, customized and clear responses to make sure that whatever her concerns are, they're being heard and information is, is being disseminated out to get the resources back to her. Every single time I hear these findings, uh, I'm not only just impressed by what our respondents shared with us, but I am absolutely fired up about what we can do and what we will do uh, to make sure that we're driving these solutions forward.